Today I design an enclosure for a Makita battery powered temperature controlled T12 soldering station. I've ordered a temperature controlled soldering iron that uses a T12 bit. It's arrived in the post, uh, cost around $40 and uh, let's open it up and see what I've got. These are the parts that were in the box, the guts of it. Uh, that's the soldering iron itself, that's the tip for the soldering iron, this is the nut that holds the tip inside the iron, that's some rubber feet and a little manual. I'm going to open up this little box, show you what's inside. It's designed to run off 24 volts but 16 to 24 volts and there's no power supply in this kit. You can run off a laptop power supply or something like that, or a battery. The case is aluminium. I've just removed screws from the four top corners and lifted the top clamshell case off. Internally, there's a small circuit board at the front, power switch and a DC jack at the rear and the soldering iron connection at that far end with a bit of hot glue around it. With both parts of the case removed, you can see the hot glue at this end secures the nut on the soldering port and it's also spilled across both these connectors holding them in place and a bit of an overspill in the bottom here. The control knob on the front is a clicky encloder uh, rather than just a potentiometer and it clicks in and out for uh, setting the menu functions. I am removing these boards and connectors from these panels so that I can use them in my Makita battery powered soldering station. This is the T12 soldering iron that comes with the kit. This signifies the T12 soldering tip. It slides right up inside there and a nut holds it in. That's it assembled. It comes with a fairly large wedge chisel tip on it which is functional a whole range of different types of tips are available for about four dollars each nice silicon cable and a uh, captive connector for the circuit board i've been playing around with makita battery powered items this was a little power supply with a switch on the end that lights up and a volt amp meter that uh, then can supply power to a cigarette lighter type adapter on this side. That was my first attempt at a Makita battery powered item. I moved on from that. I bought the green basin from a company in Victoria called Vic Tools. And from that thought, well, rather than buying that in, I should look at uh, printing my own. I got this design here off Thingiverse. Didn't much like it. You can see how it overhangs that green all around. Uh, and the green fits the battery pretty well, as you can see on here. So I thought if I could emulate that in my print. So I modified the Thingiverse program to uh, come up with my own... Uh, shoe base which uh, fits a lot better than that original one. I bought in these yellow connectors they're about uh, two dollars and uh, so the green bases fitted with a terminal block were around twenty dollars. I could buy this for two dollars and print my own shoe and uh, this is marked as prototype two. I ended up using the th my, uh, my third attempt was uh, a 
call that one prototype one, which was the thing of her sprint. This is prototype two, and uh, I further refined that to uh, make a base that uh, fits the battery neater. That's my final production base, which I'm very happy with. So this is my first attempt at printing a case that fitted on finalized base, which I call the shoe terminal block that I bought in separately. That was my first attempt. The actual little circuit board fitted inside this one neatly with the soldering connection moved down here, trying to keep the overall width of the unit narrower than the original one, having the, the adjuster at one end of the screen and the uh, soldering connection out to the side, which made it wider than the battery. My little enclosure sort of is angled so that the display looks up at you a bit more. The soldering connection is down further down the front there. This one worked. It uses the switch that was in the uh, back of the original box in here. I thought I could further improve on the appearance of this uh, first prototype of the uh, enclosure. Battery powered soldering iron. I've just printed that enclosure. It's working. That's the iron that comes with the kit. I just used the uh, power switch that was on the uh, module. This is a redesign of the enclosure with larger radius corners on the top and also a border around the display with some text. So from there I moved on. What I did with my second prototype was to increase the radius, the radiuses on the rear corners there. Improved the appearance quite a lot. Much happier with that. I also put a little border around the front panel and put some text front panel, which seemed to work pretty well. You make some modifications to one uh, prototype and then find the actual circuit board didn't fit in behind here. There wasn't enough clearance in these top corners. So I went on from prototype one which the board fitted in but once I rounded corners it didn't fit to my final version which uh, does have the display circuit board and control knob soldering connection fitted there utilizing the switch on the rear there so there's a progression of uh, three versions I've got the soldering iron connected there now and it's sitting in a Haco soldering stand just to keep it up off the table. I'm going to flick on the, the uh, soldering station. You can see from the little OLED display it's heating up. It heats up very quickly. It's currently set to 300 degrees. It's measuring the battery voltage there at 18.8 volts and the internal ambient temperature of the circuit board at 24 volts. It's also showing the soldering iron itself has got a movement detector in it that uh, flashes when I move it there in that uh, top right hand corner. The way the menu works, I can uh, adjust the temperature. You can see I've moved it up to 340 degrees. It quickly obtained that 340 degrees. We'll roll it back to 260 degrees. It's cooling down to 260. The menu function works by holding the button in for three seconds. It's highlighting different menu functions that it scrolls through. The camera is making it flash more than what I see. The calibration. If you've got a uh, device that can actually give you an accurate temperature reading and, and calibrate itself. For an auto sleep function, which uh, sets the time that it actually uh, 
will you've got it set to 300 degrees if you don't use it for a minute for example it can uh, cool down to 150 degrees and then when the movement detector detects that you're using it again it quickly shoots it back up to 300 degrees it also has an auto power off time so if you don't use the iron say for three or four minutes it can shut off completely it's got a boost function so while you're operating the iron if you come across a, a thick ground pad that needs a bit more temperature you can press the button and it'll boost the temperature perhaps you might have it set to 50 degrees so you go from 300 to 350 degrees to help melt a large solar area that boost temperature can be set separately on the next menu function the next uh, menu is the wake up method so you can use the movement detector in the iron to wake up or you can just press the button to wake it up if it's in the sleep mode it's got a buzzer in the unit which can possibly get annoying you can shut that off or enable it it's got a battery guard sets the amount that if the if it detects in this case the makita battery which is normally 18 volts but when they're charged they're up around 20 odd volts you don't want them dropping perhaps below 16 volts so it'll shut off if uh, it detects the battery voltage is down to 16 volts you can set it to 12 volts or something like that if you've got a lesser battery operating the unit you can display the temperature in degrees c or fahrenheit the next menu function does that and then you can upgrade the firmware or reset the firmware in the unit a number of worthwhile functions on the little menu there just pressing that uh, button again sends us back into normal operational mode so quite a versatile little temperature controlled iron it now operates in a neat package on a makita battery now somebody asked me why do you want a battery powered soldering iron and i think the answer is why do you want a battery powered drill it just gives you the flexibility to take the unit out to a car or a boat or a caravan away from where you want to run an extension lead and uh, you've got access to a fully functional soldering iron in that location uh, it's even worthwhile just on a bench you're not having to find another lead to run to a power point to run your soldering iron i believe this battery will run this iron in typical use up to uh, four hours now that just beat then because it's gone into a sleep mode and you see the temperature falling away as uh, as uh, it's gone into sleep mode if i pick up the iron and move it it beeps and it starts heating back up to the 300 so that's how the sleep mode works so i think it's a very useful uh, combination rather than having to uh, drag out a laptop power supply or something to plug in to the back of uh, the original box this thing is going to slide around everywhere because there's no weight in it Makita battery gives you a nice firm base I've included a uh, little hole in the top there it's rather than using a, a large soldering stand like this also ordered in a uh, wire soldering iron rest that is a spiral spring type thing that can screw into this hole now you can wire up a solar system in your caravan or install a fish finder on your boat get out to your shed and have some fun